Hi, welcome back. My name is Rekam. In this series of sessions, we were looking at data sphere topics in detail. In today's session, we're going to learn business data cloud product and the data sphere relevance in business data cloud. Just a little background. You might have heard about recent announcement um, from SAP on business data cloud product or BDC. And what on the business use case for introducing um, BDC product and what is the architecture and what are the different subscriptions or products involved in BDC in general. So what is BDC is going to do? BDC provides out of the box data set, data integration capabilities and data harmonization and transformation and reporting apps for all um, LOBs. LOBs line of businesses like uh, finance controlling, supply chain and sales, logistics and et cetera. And this product makes you to uh, do the data integrations, analytics, data science, AI, ML uh, processings at one place in one product. Let's look at the architecture of BDC product. This diagram you can see um, different applications or services uh, starting with Analytics Cloud, SAP, um, SAC, you know, for reporting and planning. It's this, this product has been there for a while and it can be available as a subscription or uh, subscribed service in BDC. And we also have BDC Cockpit. It's an administration tool to perform installations of the apps and making the data products um, search, searchable um, and install them as well. We also have DataSphere as a subscription product or service in BDC. Uh, we've been learning DataSphere for a quite uh, some time and the DataSphere um, service is now available uh, as a subscription in B BDC. DataBricks is also available as a subscribed service in BDC for performing AI, ML, and uh, data science uh, um, analysis. Foundation service is a new service. What does it do? When an, in, when an insight app, which is a out of the box app provided by SAP for to, to, to fulfill your business use case, um, we will have to install that in BDC cockpit. So when the installation is taken place, uh, the required data sets are replicated from source systems. Um, in this example, it is from S4 HANA, private cloud and success factors as another cloud, public cloud system. Um, data sets are replicated, which are loaded into foundation services and harmonized and transformed and made available as a data product for um, consumption. At the same time, data sphere, in data sphere, analytical models are required for that insight app are generated and they are generated inside SAP managed space. You also have custom spaces in DataSphere, uh, but this activity taken place inside the SAP managed space, which is not accessible to the developers or customers. So with that information, foundation services playing a very important role in BDC um, to replicate the data, harmonize, transform, and make the data product available for um, analytical models and reporting applications or insight apps. So having said that, so we got two out of the box functionality um, available as part of PDC. One is data product, as we just talked about, an insight app, which is um, reporting app. Uh, we'll focus on data products in this session uh, as uh, we, Insight apps is like a more reporting object. So um, the foundation services, we just um, talked about a, uh, how data is replicated when an Insight app is installed. Uh, let's little uh, more understand what is involved in foundation services. So we said data replication is taking place here. So in order to replicate the data, uh, we need a storage or a SAP needs a storage. So uh, for that, HANA Cloud Data Lake service is being used um, for data storage and data stored in files. 
So uh, underlying technology, you can see that HANA um, object store for this um, data, st data storage. So unlike uh, most of our previous scenarios, we, we, we were leveraging HANA cloud database for data storage uh, from this product inter inter introduction onwards. This is going to be more data lake or data lake plus delta lake um, framework to access the to access the data further. So that's a big change um, that we have seen uh, with the introduction of BDC, uh, and it happens in foundation services. And this data replication into the file storage or the HANA Cloud data lake storage is fully managed by SAP, so which means um, uh, customers uh, don't have access to um, the SAP managed foundation services and data, data products that are being generated because it's fully managed by SAP. Uh, if we wanted to, if the customer wanted to go for a custom uh, data product, and that's when uh, it's going to be a little different. Uh, uh, we will look at that little later in this today's session. So that's about the storage in foundation services. To summarize what we discussed, um, when the Insight app activation taken place, data is replicated from uh, different source systems into foundation services um, data storage or delta storage and then harmonized and made available as data product. At the same time, data products uh, generate uh, analytical models in Datasphere, and those models will be consumed in Analytics Cloud as an Insight app. And you can also uh, access the data in Databricks without replicating again, and perform AIML um, activities, and uh, you can provide these Insight app with the ML capabilities. Uh, that's pretty much the summary or the high level explanation of bis business data cloud product. And it's currently available on BTP as a subscribed uh, service. So you can um, activate the required components in BDC. For example, you can um, subscribe to BDC Data Sphere or you can subscribe to uh, Databricks and Data Sphere together or you can just go with the uh, data sphere alone with if you don't need AI ML capabilities. And then we move on to the other topic, uh, the impact on data sphere. The reason we are going through this topic is because we've been learning data sphere for quite some time and uh, we've been using it as a data integration tool uh, to um, extract the data from different source systems using connectors, um, replication flows, and data is replicated in, um, in fact, in dimension or master data tables in data sphere. And then on top of that, analytical models are created in data sphere. Um, but with the introduction of BDC, um, is it going to be the same case? Um, but it looks like not. So there's going to be a lot of changes coming um, in terms of ETL, especially because of the reason that ETL is now being managed by SAP um, to replicate the data into foundation uh, foundation services instead of directly getting into SAP HANA cloud database, which is the underlying data base for uh, your data sphere system. Um, you continue to use the data sphere product as standalone, or you can use that as part of BDC, uh, but the ETL process will change a lot, um, as I can understand um, from the um, architecture of BDC. BDC. Okay, so uh, let's understand uh, how data sphere is current uh, or will be used in inside the data cloud or BDC. You can see in the left-hand side, you can see out-of-the-box scenario where data products are, are available as in foundation services after replicating. And then they will be uh, part of data sphere as, 
as a, as we already seen in an SAP managed secured space as a semantically rich models, and you can apply the row level security in here, and then and then and insight apps can consume this uh, data as part of the installation um, post installation activity, and then. In a custom scenario, the scenario two, where you can see the data products from replicated in foundation services, um, SAP or third party. And then uh, here, the data products are uh, copied or replicated uh, into SAP um, data sphere customer managed space. Um, so in this, in this uh, scenario, um, you, Customers can have control on the data products and also the objects being generated on top of those um, data products. Um, in this scenario, uh, we will install the data products directly in um, in DataSphere, um, not as a install app or a insight app in the first scenario. So the, the process is a little different. And then in this custom scenario, you can combine um, uh, your data products from SAP uh, and also non-SAP systems and prepare a custom uh, data model in Datasphere. And then this can be consumed in SAP Analytics Cloud. In another other scenario, you can still use um, uh, Datasphere capabilities, native data capabilities without in interfering with a BDC. So the data can be replicated into uh, data sphere for a custom integration scenarios. So you, you can use or leverage the connectors uh, available in data sphere for ETL use cases. And you can still continue to use those uh, replication uh, mechanisms and load the data into uh, HANA Cloud, uh, which is the underlying database for data sphere, and then perform the um, analytics model generation there. So in this use case, you're not going through uh, SAP's data products, which are out of the box data products are available uh, in foundation services. And this is how, how currently we are doing in data sphere standalone um, use case. Uh, with that said, uh, the conclusion is um, as we see more increased number of data products in uh, BDC. This is going to be um, less uses of data sphere connections and custom um, uh, model generations um, in general. Uh, currently, there are very few readily available data products, but over a period of time in the next four to six months time, there will be number of uh, data models um, um, available in BDC and activate or install them and use them uh, as out of the box capabilities from BDC. Um, with that said, uh, there's going to be a lot of changes coming in uh, as part of BDC and um, and there are going to be some changes to the data sphere uh, ETL architectures as well in as uh, as 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 the time goes on. Well, stay tuned and then. Oh, we will update whenever there is a new learning in this BDC product in the upcoming sessions. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.